I'm a Greek goddess eating my hummus. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You guys said, Adriana, we want you to take Iconic Eats International. We have to see you abroad. But then you said, we love you on a cruise ship. Do more cruise ship episodes. So we thought we'd give you a two for one and we are on Virgin Voyages in Greece. This is a 17 deck ship. We are gonna work our way from the bottom to the top. There are 20 different eateries that we are gonna try. Everything from savory to sweet. We're gonna have everything from Korean barbecue to Italian food. This is gonna be an amazing experience and it's gonna be a food journey. This is Iconic Eats at sea! So we are starting off strong. We're on deck five. We're gonna start at the bottom and work our way up. And we are at Pink Agave. This is their Mexican inspired restaurant already eaten a few dishes here so i'm super excited to share with you guys what we're gonna try today so this is the milojas this is a sweeter option so technically a dessert we're gonna start our our vacation off sweet tamarind passion fruit and pineapple and then we it's we have these layers of like pastry dough and the cream in the middle oh am i smashing it mm, that. It kind of like reminds me of like, like a whipped ricotta almost. Um, it has like really fresh flavors in it. Like the passion fruit, it makes it kind of zippy, but like it's just smooth and creamy and not too heavy. So this dessert I definitely would think would be for somebody who would enjoy a lighter option. They don't want anything like chocolatey or heavy. It's one like a little sweet after their meal. So here on Virgin, they're doing things a little bit different. It's not like a traditional cruise or the type of cruise you might be used to. So there's no buffets, there's no rotational dining. Instead, you make reservations at one of their 20 different locations. Now, every single one doesn't need a reservation, but their featured dining does. So like Pink Agave, Razzle Dazzle, Test Kitchen, all of those are gonna re require reservations and you make them as you want. So. If you want to eat at Pink Agave every night of your eight-day cruise, by all means, go ahead. But I'm going to show you all the different restaurants so you know which one's the go-to. Hello! We're at Razzle Dazzle. This is our second location on Jack 5. I really enjoy the theming of this restaurant because it's all about... Um, a little bit of naughty, a little bit of nice. So a lot of the dishes are uh, plant forward, vegan, mostly vegetarian, very experimental. Um, so you can try things that are kind of nice. But if you are feeling a little naughty, you want something maybe heavier, you want to try something a little bit richer, We they do have a more meat forward and indulgent forward menu as well. So it's like Decide what you want to be today. All right, so we're going to start with the nice option. This is the mushroom tartare. There's lots of different mushrooms in it. A little tiny, tiny mushroom. Do you see those? They're so cute. And then we have a tarragon salsa verde. And house-made crostinis. Oh, wow. It's like a, a mouthful of flavor. When you think mushrooms, you think super earthy, but it's not very earthy. It does have that element, but it's super bright. I think the tarragon uh, salsa verde adds like this a certain amount of acidity and brightness that you really enjoy. So this is the type of dish that you would want another plate of crostinis because you would want to sop it all up. I'm going to be a little bit naughty and we are doing their brand new menu item. This is the slow braised pastrami short rib. So all of the ships and Virgin are sister ships. So that means that they're basically the same layout. They have similar restaurants or the same restaurants. They're not twins, so they're not exactly identical. A few things are a little bit different, but for the most part, you're getting the same layout. So Razzle Dazzle is on each and every ship. But what's special to the Resilient Lady is this is a brand new menu item. They've revamped it, and so we are getting to see this item first. Let me manufacture your son. That's beautiful. Ah, so spicy. Now, 
it's not <laughs> it's not spicy in this like hot sense like my mouth isn't on fire it's just a lot of flavor so there is a big are these mush mush not mushrooms are these mustard seeds and they literally explode in your mouth like it's just if you like bold if you like not necessarily naughty just like in your face that's that's the dazzle we figured it out the vegetables and the the vegan side or vegetarian side is the razzle and then like the bold and daring is definitely the dazzle we have moved up a deck we are on deck six and this is the test kitchen we are going on a, a taste experience um, the dishes are not even named. We just get an ingredient. So there's menu A and there's menu B. And on different nights of your voyage, it will change. So we are presented with menu A. We're gonna jump right into our first dish, which I don't have a name for other than mushroom. A chef told me Anjamiji and I am, that's a part of this dish. Is that a mushroom? Is that a mushroom? Yeah. I'm learning so much today. <laughs> so this, look at it. This is what I want y'all to understand. This is a mushroom, but it's not a mushroom. It's like, it's very meta. They made a mushroom and then they blended it all up and they put it into the shape of a mushroom. Look, it's mousse. Mushroom mousse. You're doing great, sweetie. I ain't napkin. You just ate it from me. <laughs> this is a really cool appetizer because you want like my favorite type of appetizer is a dip or a bread dish so it takes the idea of like a mushroom bread dish or a mushroom dip and just really like gives it to you in a really interesting way ready for the next one yes vegetables have never smelled so smoky edible flowers peas caviar and an egg yolk on top and then they smoked it. I feel like this is a, there's an island and there's a little mountain on top that is made of egg yolk. I will never deprive you of an egg yolk break. Oh, oh, oh my God. Look at it, just rolling down the heels. She's goopy. Oh my God. So the English peas, so they're bigger, juicier, sweeter. They really mix well with like the creaminess of the yolk and then the caviar adds like the right amount of salt. It's just like a very interesting combo that you would not think would go together. So you know how like you make peas with butter? Imagine instead of you using butter and salt, you're using egg and caviar. And then this is a Guinness bread. And I, oh, I wanna try it all together. I feel like this feels, does it feel English when you put like things on toast? I feel like that's a, a, like beans on toast, you know? Wait, I have to hold it and hold my pinky out. <laughs> this is our scallop dish. It has obviously scallops, seaweed, serrano ham, and then it's sitting in a broth that they pour on top in the beginning. Wow, I feel like this is gonna be like a salt bomb. Yeah. <laughs> ham on top of scallops. This is infinitely more briny than I thought it would be. So I'm thinking like, oh, it's scallops, it's it's uh, serrano ham, so it's gonna be really salty. But it isn't just salty. It does have that like briny, almost like olivey kind of flavor. I can kind of taste even like a little bit. Of, oh, there it is. But I could taste dill, and there's a giant sprig of dill just hanging out amongst the seaweed. This is a very unique experience that I do not think you would get on any other cruise ship. We are on to our beef portion of the menu. This plating looks not only artistic, but a little violent. She would think that we paid extra for this, but we didn't. This is completely included within the price of our cruising, which most of the items we're gonna show you today on this particular episode will be included. We do have one little special thing that's an add-on, but everything that you're seeing right now is a part of your sailing, and I I think that's really special. Get in slow-mo, please. Oh, okay. -na -na. oh, this is my first time asking for slow-mo today. This is very savory and 
and the sauce is super sweet underneath. Not like a coinly sweet, but just like, I don't know, fruity. And it really mixes well with the flavor of the beef. And it's kind of unexpected. There's also potato. And what's interesting about this potato is that it's in layers. And then this is bacon powder. White. The bacon powder is white. Ooh, ooh, look how it just fell apart. Imagine like a crispy baked potato with like bacon on top, but instead of bacon, it's just like this really weird powder that tastes like bacon. Oh my God. Is it like wild? Yeah, it is. Kind of blows your mind. It turns to nothing in your mouth. This is dish number five. This is a blue cheese um, palate cleanser, like a blue cheese and blue bouche, which does not make sense to me. Because it's supposed to like cleanse your palate and like take away the stuff, but blue cheese is like, bam, in your face. It's cheese. Um, so they told me to try to get a little bit of everything. They have a little bit of pear, a little bit of the blue cheese mousse, and some pecans. That's like if blue cheese was butter. Like, oh, wait a minute. I'm always doing it wrong. I need, <laughs> only the middle part though. Only the good. So it's cold, it's buttery. It's very different than what you would think blue cheese would be. The flavor is still there, but it's just like so soft and creamy. I get why it's a, a palate cleanser. I kind of want to just like sit here and eat the rest of it. And now for the finale. It's a chocolate sponge cake. There's something on top that kind of like looks like a sponge too. And then like pomegranate seeds or little, no, they're not pomegranate seeds. Like little jelly, strawberry deliciousness. It's strawberry caviar. It's out of here. Ooh. Am I gonna eat this? Like, you don't yeah. share this. Yeah, you know what? Help, help, help. In tandem, I feel like I've had this experience by myself today and you haven't got to get any of it. So, cheers. cheers. Dessert party. Wow. Chocolate heaven. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is coming with me. Mm -hmm. Bye. Okay. Yep, okay, we're bye. done. <laughs> we are still on deck six, and this is Extra Virgin. So this is their Italian-themed restaurant. And we have the Bucatini Carbonara. This is a traditional carbonara with egg yolk, pecorino romano, and pancetta. I've never had Bucatini before. It has a hole in the middle. So it's a hollow noodle. It's like a, it's a fat, juicy noodle. So what I already enjoy is this is the perfect portion size of pasta. Like, I feel like I could eat this whole amount and like feel full, but like also want to try maybe another little pasta as well, which is really cool about cruise ships because like I said, there's so many options to try and you don't want to like fill up on the one thing. You want to try like a little bit of everything. There is fresh rosemary at the table. Now I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to pull some out and throw it into your pasta, but it just makes everything smell fresh. Moving on to dessert here at Extra Virgin. I have heard so much about their table side affogato. I have never had affogato, but I do like espresso and I do love gelato. Um, so it is a dessert where they put gelato and espresso and you get these really fun toppings. So I got the whiskey crema and then you have four toppings you can choose from. So almonds, chocolate, marshmallows, pine nuts. I got all four because I really want to try it. And then there's whipped cream topping. So let's dig in. So it's like coffee dessert. We love a dessert. 
I see why people are obsessed with this. It's very comforting. It gives you that little bit of energy you need after a heavier meal like pasta. So it's like a little bit of a pick-me-up because you have your espresso, but it's also sweet and creamy. And you get to pick your toppings. This restaurant is very cute. There's lots of interactive elements. And behind me, when they are having service, you can watch them put together your charcuterie boards. I love all the little details of you being able to see into the kitchen in some of these restaurants because you know that the food is fresh and they're making it just for you. We're making our way up the ship to deck seven to their steakhouse, which I have tried several times at this point. It's the wake, I can't wait to show you. And this is where we're gonna get our big surprise. So we have moved up to deck seven. We are at the wake, which is their steakhouse. Um, and in front of me, I do not have steak yet. This is their whole Durant. So the whole Durant comes in a salt crust, which already looks like a little mermaid. And then they cut it open and pull the fish out and then cover it in a caper butter lemon sauce. It looks absolutely amazing. It's so tender, you don't need a knife. I'm just scooping. The caper butter sauce is absolutely amazing. The fish is a meaty fish. I'd never had a Durad before. It's very much um, giving me a fish that you would get at a steakhouse. It's definitely a thicker, meatier, heartier fish. I definitely recommend the whole Durad and you get a whole little presentation with it. I love dinner on a show. At The Wake, just like many of the restaurants here, on Virgin Voyages, you have a beautiful view of the seaside or wherever you are docked. And we are in Mykonos today. So I am looking at the beautiful white houses with the blue doors and it is just adding to the whole experience. We are still at the wake. This is the steakhouse. So of course we had to get some steak. This is their 40 day dry aged tomahawk steak. It is covered in rosemary butter, cooked to temperature and it looks absolutely delicious. Everything you get at this restaurant is included except for alcohol, but this is a treat yourself item. So it is $65 extra, which I might say is a phenomenal price for a tomahawk steak. So this is an opportunity to have um, something that you may not normally treat yourself to. And I, I'm gonna indulge and of course I'm gonna share a little bit with Chelsea. This trip is making me so fancy. This is a lot of firsts. Um, this is not my first time having this tomahawk. We kind of had um, a little sneak peek a couple days ago and all I remember is that the fat tasted so buttery. And so when we got to watch the process today, I realized why it was so buttery because it's just rosemary butter being smeared all over this tomahawk. Oh. I'm ready. This is what luxury feels like. I never want to go home. Are you a sauce girl? You want to try it by itself? I want to try it by itself. All right. But normally sauce girl. Ooh. Living Lux. If you are not a steak purist, it does come with a little bit of steak sauce and a Bernays. I have never had, I've always seen people like put Bernays on steak. I've never actually had it. So just to complete, the experience. I'm gonna finally try that for you guys. It's just as delicious as I thought. It's just b more butter and creamy and delicious. <sighs> All right, go away, Chelsea. I'm just gonna finish my food. I can't go anywhere. All right, fine. Then just cut the cameras and let's eat this. We are moving right along to dessert. This is a baked Alaska, this is very different from the baked Alaska I know. So first off, it is very teeny tiny and appropriately sized. We've had a baked Alaska um, on my very first episode, my in no, it wasn't my episode, but on my like introduction to you guys on Julia Tries, and it was a giant baked Alaska. <laughs> This might be the most chaotic round I have ever shot. None of it makes sense. No. And so this is like the mini version. 
Pumpkin. Um, inside is pistachio ice cream, and then we have cherries, and we have pistachios as well. I am learning new things, too, that pistachios are native to Greece, so these are local. I'm ready to dig in. Beautiful. So we have the marshmallow, we have the pistachio ice cream, cherries, cheers. So cherries and pistachio go together really well, just like cherries and almonds. Before eating this, I was not a big pistachio girl. I've had like pistachio ice cream before, but like some people who just like, like to eat the nuts, I'm not like that. But this dessert, it's like the perfect ending to like either the tomahawk steak or that fish that we had. Like it's, a, it's sweet, it's refreshing, it's cold, but it's not a lot. So you don't feel like you're gonna go home and be like, ooh, roll me off the ship, you know? We were at the dock house and I wanted a little snack, so I got some beet hummus. The Virgin prides itself on having both gluttonous and healthy options. Never had beet hummus, it's a very pink. Try it. Oh, wait. I really like that. Imagine regular hummus, but like, a little bit more earthy it like I said there's more garlic than anything can't really taste like a lot of the beet but the fact that it's pink makes it really fun oh, oh, no. oh no just a, I mean if I had to drop one thing at least it was a chip and not like a piece of steak So we are at the social club, which is fashioned like a diner. And right outside, there's so many games you can play. There's puzzles, there's Yahtzee, and then inside there's hot dogs themed after cities that people less cool than Chicago live in. No play, I'm just joking. So the Philly cheese steak hot dog, it's delicious. Um, so you're gonna get a traditional Philly, but with that wonderful hot dog underneath. And then like this cheese with sauce, it's drippy, it's gooey, it's the saltiness you crave when you're hanging out with your friends and family, playing games in the social club. I'm gonna finish my hot dog at this diner, but behind me you can see popcorn and all these wonderful shake glasses. So in the next episode, we're gonna try one of their boozy shakes, so stay tuned for that. Can I please have the black catfish? Thank you. We're at the Grounds Club, this is their coffee cafe. They have good coffee and even more wonderful pastries. I have eaten a jalapeno cheese croissant every day on the ship, sometimes twice a day, don't tell nobody. They're really good. I took one and put it in my room and just like ate it at 12 o'clock at night one day. It was like, mm, it was great. Um, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for the coffee. The majority of your food and drink is included except for alcohol, like we said before, but also specialty coffee. So you can have drip coffee as much as you want, but if you want a little espresso, it is a treat yourself item. So I got the Black Cat Fizz. It is espresso, tonic, and orange bitters. It's, it's kind of like a coffee cocktail. Apparently it's very European. Mm -hmm, I'm getting cultured. It tastes like an orange soda and a coffee had a baby. I like it, like if you like orange in your coffee and you also like the taste of espresso, because it's not very sweet. It is um, like a little bitter, but not as bitter as like, I would think like tonic and coffee, that's too many bitter, and orange, there's too many bitter things, but it mixed together really well. Another cool thing about the Grounds Club is you can add alcohol to any beverage. Um, and I feel like this one would be perfect to add like a little Jameson to. Mm-hmm. Would you like to try it? Yeah. I feel like you're, are you, I feel like you're scared. I'm you're always scared. scared. She's a scaredy cat. Try the black cat fizz. Oh, you weren't kidding. No, it is. This is confusing, <laughs> but I can see it's very European. It, it is. Who loves orange soda? <laughs> I love coffee. <laughs> Mm 
we are at the cheekiest little ice cream shop. It's called Lick Me Till I Scream. And so, of course, I gotta get some ice cream. Let's go. So you can choose your cone. So I'm gonna get a red. No, okay. Mm, eh. Should I get midnight vanilla or red velvet? I'm a red velvet girl. Okay, let's get a red velvet cone. Yes. Ooh, so they have chocolate, they have malted strawberry, vanilla, key lime pie, butter, pecan, espresso. I feel like I found it. I, I feel like I always get something espresso. Mm, let's be a little naughty. Let's do the chocolate. Thank you. All right, so we got the chocolate, but it has like hazelnuts in it and chocolate fudge. It's kind of like a Fiero Rocher, but in an ice cream form. And then of course the red velvet cone. And so let me try it. Oh my God. That is a Fiero Rocher. Can you say Ferrero Rocher instead of Fiero? Ferrero Rocher, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Oh, no, okay. you said Fiero. Like you're saying like, like Guy Fieri. It is just like a Fiero Rocher. You say Fiero. You keep saying Fiero, yeah. So it, it is just like a for, for I've been saying that word wrong my whole life, you know? So it's a Ferraro Rocher, not a Fiero Rocher. Don't come for me. I've been saying it wrong my whole life, but this is delicious. We're at the pizza place. This is the late night spot to go. After you've had a couple too many, we have come here a couple nights in a row um, to get some pizza late at night. And what I love about it is that they make it fresh. So they roll out that dough, that's fresh mozzarella that they're putting on there, and then they're putting it in a brick oven. So this is gonna come out piping hot, fresh and delicious. And we have the white truffle and egg pizza. So it's like your traditional mozzarella, tomato sauce, but then they put that truffle oil on it, fresh cracked black pepper, and then a egg. And it is ooey gooey and it looks delicious. Oh my God. You have to get all of that egg yolk. Just bread and pizza and egg yolk and truffle. And, mm. There's so much variety of the different pieces you can get. If truffle is not your thing, I totally understand, but this one is so pungent. Like I can really taste the truffle. Eggs in Europe are different, y'all. The yolk, look how like orangey and rich that yolk looks. Ugh. I'm probably gonna order like another one before we get off the ship. We are at Gumbe! This is the first Korean barbecue at sea. So these were specially made electric grills just for Virgin Voyages. And now we're going to be able to have Korean barbecue at sea. Gumbe means cheers in Korean. And we are going to have soju, which is one of my favorite drinks. Soju is like really sweet wine. And you shoot it like a shot. No sipping, shoot. Gumbe. Now it's time to play our drinking game. In our restaurant, it's called Samyuku. Samyuku is mean three, six, nine. Game is very easy, we just count the numbers. So this game is contained with number three, number six, number nine. In any number, if it has three, six, or nine in it, we will not mention those numbers. Okay. But what you have to do on those numbers, you have to clap. And who mess up? You have to take a shot, buzz them up. The rest of us will cheer you up by shouting, Ganbe, Ganbe. In the meantime, you're taking a shot. John, can you get in there? Oh, we don't need water. We just need alcohol. All right, so we're going to play the game with Julia and John. John's my Gumbe. One, two, four. Gumbe. One. Two. Four. Five. Seven. Eight. Number. Let's go. So I say seven? Yes, seven. Eight. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Gumbe! Oh! Yeah. Yeah. Gumbe! 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 Twenty-four. 
40. 41. 42. 44. 45. Oh. <laughs> go go me, me, go me, go me, go me, go me. We have our chef special here, and then we have these little appetizers slash like salads. You kind of mix these with your meat. They add to the flavor, and then we have lettuce wraps. So I'm gonna make myself like a little lettuce wrap. I'm gonna add some of my pork belly, maybe a little bit of the short rib, the sesame oil, just a little. So you put everything together that you like and you just kind of choose what you want. I feel like I've said this over and over on this shit, but I am so impressed because this is not a premium experience. This is not anything that we pay extra for. This comes with your sailing. So if you are into Korean barbecue, which I love doing it at home, but this is the first time you can do it at sea and get like a, a completely unique experience. We have black sesame soft serve, and it comes with granola, sprinkles, and a miso caramel. It's gonna finish up our experience here at Gumbe. Oh my God, it smells so good. Black sesame is such a unique flavor. And that miso caramel, I wanna like, just keep dipping it in the miso caramel. We have a little bit more over here. Oh my God, that's so good. It's like savory and sweet. So good. So we have one more stop on deck 15, right outside in the galley. We are at the galley. This is still on deck 15. This is Virgin's answer to the traditional cruise buffet. So there's a bunch of different stations around, but there's still table service. So you come, you sit down, you scan the QR code, the menu comes up, and someone comes to your table and you pick out what you want. And we have the fried avocado tacos. So it's fried avocado with a pipion sauce, basically pumpkin and red chili. So it's, I'm sure it's gonna be a little bit zesty. And then there's pickled onions on top. We have a sauce on the side, chips and lime. Radish, pickled onions, the fried avocado, and then the pipion sauce is just like super like zesty, but not too spicy. One thing I do enjoy about cruise ships is that it says that it's spicy. It's not super spicy because they want to make it more uh, accommodating to everyone's taste buds. There's just a little hint of spice. There's several options at the galley. There's tacos, there's hamburgers, there's a coffee shop. There's all day breakfast. So while some of the options will shut down eventually, breakfast is served all day and all night. So after you're done partying at your location, you can come and have you some bacon and eggs and toast. We couldn't leave the galley without getting one more option. So this is the shrimp salad sandwich. I know you guys are gonna get sick of me being like, this is a premium item, but a shrimp salad sandwich at like any other restaurant is like 20 bucks. And this is free essentially, or included. <laughs> I'm excited, let's go. Oh, look at the grill marks. <laughs> If I can pull like actual chunks of shrimp out, she means business. It is seasoned so well. It has like the zippiest, zestiest red onions and it has a little bit of a kick to it. Like there's some spicy mayo or some, some chilies in there. And I know I just said like, oh, if you get something on the ship, it's not gonna be too spicy, but this one is, it's pushing the limit. We're headed to the tippy top. The last item at the top of the ship. Deck 16, here we come. We have beautiful Mykonos to our left, 
and the pool and everybody hanging out and there's these wonderful bars we're gonna feature these in the next episode because they got some pretty good drinks the wind blowing in my head. we are going to get the smoky oyster mushroom bow there's a DJ downstairs. He's playing Cake by the Ocean. It's so appropriate. Jonas Brothers, please don't sue us. Okay, anyway. <laughs> we are getting the Oyster Mushroom Bow Buns. I love a bow bun. These are super fresh. So squishy. Chipotle mayo on top of that with some sesame seeds. I'm ready to dig in. What an ending to our day here um, on Virgin Voyages. The oyster mushrooms taste so much like chicken. Like you cannot tell that that is a plant-based option. It's like so meaty and I love when they use like actual plant-based like plants. You know, instead of like fake meat or like soy meat. I love when they just use like mushrooms or other plants in order to mimic that flavor because so many of them taste so much like chicken or beef. And this is perfect in the bao bun. It has crisp vegetables. It's a good like outside beach pool snack. Something light to hold you over until dinner or for your next excursion. I absolutely love it. We gotta go to Mykonos. We have to enjoy our adventure. We had all of the food and now it's time to see the world. But I will see you guys on another day at another park or cruise for another adventure. Bye! What? Uh, we are, I need a 15 minute nap. I'm in a food coma. Okay. Bye! See you out there!